Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a Diophantin equation, an equation with integer solutions. We have a plus 2ab plus b equals 52 and we're going to be evaluating a plus b. In other words, we're going to find a numerical value. So the quick and easy and cheap answer is if you isolate a plus b, you're going to get 52 minus 2ab, but that's not what I'm looking for. All right, great. So I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, first of all, I want to go ahead and write the product first. In this case, that happens to be 2ab. Now, I'm going to try to factor this expression. My goal is to isolate one of the variables and write it in terms of the other. It could be a or b doesn't matter because notice that we have symmetry so if a comma b is a solution b comma a is also going to be a solution makes sense okay great so let's go ahead and factor the first two expressions if i take out an a i'm going to get 2b plus 1 2b or not 2b plus b equals 52 and then from here i can subtract b from both sides and that'll give me a times 2b plus 1 equals 52 minus b. And then divide both sides by 2b plus 1. And then now you got a in terms of b. All right, even though it's not the nicest expression, the nicest form of it, we're going to turn it into something nicer with some work. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to write this as negative b plus 52 divided by 2b plus 1. Notice that if you divide negative b by 2b, you're going to get negative 1 half. So we can try to factor this in such a way that the something is going to cancel out. And here's how, what you can do. If you consider multiplying the 2b plus 1 by negative 1 half, think about it. If you multiply this by negative 1 half, you're going to get negative b minus 1 half. So in other words, if I have negative b minus 1 half in the numerator, I can factor a, a negative 2 out and I can cancel things. Now, to be able to do that, I'm going to go ahead and write this as negative b minus 1 half in order to make it look like this. And then, of course, I need to add something to make it 52, right? And that number should be 52 and 1 half. Makes sense? Because when you add negative 1 half and 52 and 1 half, the answer is going to be 52, 1 half is going to cancel out, and that divided by 2b plus 1, which I can actually factor out the 2 and write it as b plus 1 half. Awesome. Now take a look at this and notice that negative b minus 1 half is the opposite of b plus 1 half. Make sense? So we can do the following. First of all, we can go ahead and factor out a one half which is the number right here and then the numerator I can write it as the opposite of b plus one half and then plus 52 and one half is just gonna be 105 over 2 so we can kinda write it like this and the whole thing is gonna be divided by b plus one half now this is when we're gonna separate them and obviously this one half should kinda like a b here in the front, right? And now I can do this. One half is still gonna stay, but I can kind of write this as negative, the opposite of b plus one half, divided by b plus one half, plus 105 over two, divided by b plus one half. Here, one thing that I can do, which is gonna be very helpful, is to multiply the top and the bottom by two, so that we can kind of cancel out and write this in a simpler way. This is gonna become, one half times negative one and here since the twos are going to cancel out and i'm going to distribute it it's going to be 105 divided by 2b plus one now this form later on you're going to realize is going to be uh, familiar to you because it's going to come up with the second method as well so all right so how do we separate this first of all let's multiply both sides by two get rid of the one half and now write our expression like this. Make sense? So far so good? Great. Now, 
I'm going to be looking at factors of 105 because 2b plus 1 needs to divide 105. Notice that 105 can be factored into 3, 5, and 7, all of which are odd primes. Therefore, 2b plus 1 is always going to divide 105 if it's one of the divisors. Make sense? So we don't have any even divisors, nothing to eliminate. And let's go ahead and go through these cases. So 2b plus 1 can be 3, which means 105 divided by 3 is 35. So from here, 2a becomes negative 1 plus 35, which is 34. And that implies that a is 17 and b is 2. So this gives us the ordered pair 17, 1, comma 1. And of course, the sum will be 18 in this case. Because remember, we're looking for a plus b. So just add those numbers every time. And then for another case, if 2b plus 1 is equal to 5, from here 2a becomes negative 1 plus 1 of 5 divided by 5 is equal to 21. So it's going to be negative 1 plus 21, which is 20. From here we get a equals 10 and b equals 2. If 2b plus 1 is equal to 7, then 2a is going to be negative 1 plus 15. You get to drill, right? And then that's equal to 14. So from here a is 7 b is 3, and then I'm going to show you something which will indicate something that I already talked about. If 2b plus 1 is equal to 15, then 2a is going to be negative 1 plus 7, which is equal to 6, and from here, a is going to be a 3 and b is going to be a 7. Notice that these are symmetrical, right? So that means we're going to be getting all of these reversed. And we already talked about it, right? a and b are interchangeable. And of course, I did not do the negative ones, but you can also do those. By the way, this is going to give you a sum of 12. This is going to give you a 10, and that's going to give you a 10 too. So the rest is fairly similar, uh, and you can kind of figure it out because I am about to talk about the second method. All right, the second method is actually very similar, but it uses something called SFFT or Simon's favorite factoring trick. If you factor the A again, you're going to get 2B plus 1 plus b equals 52. Remember, we started off with the same thing. But notice that this b is missing a 2. This one has a 2 in it, but this one doesn't. So let's multiply everything by 2. That's going to give us something like this, 2a times 2b plus 1. And that you can multiply in this form, plus 2b equals 104. And then you can kind of go ahead and just add 1 to both sides because then you'll have a common factor. And of course, 2b plus 1 is multiplied by 1, right? If it's not written, 2b plus 1 is a common factor. So if you pull it out, you're going to get 2a plus 1 equals 105. Because we added 1 to both sides, I forgot to add the 1 there. Sorry about that. Let me fix it real quick. Okay, great. So now, let's go back to what we got when we kind of separated the expression into two pieces. Notice that if you add 1 to both sides and cross multiply, you're going to get the exact same thing. So the rest is similar, same idea. One thing that I want to tell you though, if you take these two things, I want to show you something real quick. If you take 2a plus 1 and 2b plus 1 and add them, this can actually be written as 2 times the quantity a plus b plus 2. In the, in the last case, for example, if you use 1 of 5 and 1, let's just say, the sum of these two factors will be 106. And from here, a plus b can be found by subtracting 2 and dividing by 2. So you basically get the sum of the factors. Let's call that n, okay? If the sum of the factors is n, and then basically a plus b is just going to be n minus 2 divided by 2. And in this case, we got 52 from here when n is equal to 106. And that basically corresponds to the ordered pair 52 comma 0. And this brings us to the end of this video. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.